How to Form Questions in English from EspressoEnglish.net Many students get confused with the word order in questions, but there's a simple way to form almost any question in English. Just follow this formula. Question word, auxiliary verb, subject, main verb. This formula can be used for many tenses. Let's look at some examples. Simple present questions. Where do you work? Where is the question word? Do is the auxiliary verb. You is the subject. And work is the main verb. Another example is what does he think about this? In this case, the auxiliary verb is does because the subject is he. Questions in the simple past also follow this pattern. How did she like the workshop? Where did you buy that t-shirt? For questions in the simple past, the auxiliary verb is did. Here are two questions in the present continuous. What are you doing right now? Why is Peter ignoring me? It's the same formula, but the auxiliary verb is a form of the verb to be, are or is, instead of do or does. In the past continuous, the auxiliary verb is were or was. Who were you talking to on the phone? How was he feeling after his surgery? This formula also works with present perfect questions. In this case, the auxiliary verb is have or has. How long have you worked here? What have they been doing lately? For questions in the future, we can use will or going to. Who will you invite to the party? When are you going to clean your room? In the case of modal questions, the auxiliary verb is should, could, or would. Where should we go on our next vacation? How could I improve my English? In the case of yes or no questions, they don't have a question word, but they still follow the formula of auxiliary verb, subject, main verb. For example, do you like bananas? Did they enjoy the movie? Has he finished his homework? A few more exceptions to this formula are questions with to be as the main verb. For example, are you hungry? Reported questions, indirect questions, and subject questions like who ate the last piece of pizza also do not follow this formula but we'll learn those in a different lesson. For normal questions in any verb tense, you can use the formula question word, auxiliary verb, subject, main verb, and be confident of forming the question correctly every time. Thanks for watching English Tips from Espresso English. If you liked this video, please share it. Direct and Indirect Questions in English from EspressoEnglish.net Direct questions are the normal questions we ask to friends, family, and people we know well. For example, where's the bathroom? Indirect questions are more formal and polite. We use indirect questions when talking to a person we don't know well or in more professional situations. For example, could you tell me where the bathroom is? Here are some phrases to use for beginning an indirect question. Could you tell me? Do you know? I was wondering. 
Do you have any idea? I'd like to know. Would it be possible? Is there any chance? Now, the structure of the question changes in indirect questions. Let's look at some examples. Direct. Where is Market Street? Indirect. Could you tell me where Market Street is? In indirect questions, forms of the verb to be, like is, are, and were, come after the subject, not before the subject. Direct. What time does the bank open? Indirect. Do you know what time the bank opens? In indirect questions, we don't use auxiliary verbs like do, does, or did. Also, in the indirect question, we say the bank opens. Direct. Why did you move to Europe? Indirect. I was wondering why you moved to Europe. Again, there's no auxiliary verb did in the indirect question. As a result, we say moved instead of move. Direct. How has he managed to get in shape so quickly? Indirect. Do you have any idea how he has managed to get in shape so quickly? The verbs have, has, and had also come after the subject in indirect questions. Direct. How much does this motorcycle cost? Indirect. I'd like to know how much this motorcycle costs. To form the indirect question, we eliminate the auxiliary verb does and change cost to costs. Direct. Can you finish the project by tomorrow? Indirect. Would it be possible for you to finish the project by tomorrow? For questions with the word can, we use would it be possible in the indirect question. Also, we say to finish instead of finish. Direct. Can we change the meeting to Thursday? Indirect. Is there any chance we could change the meeting to Thursday? Is there any chance is another way to ask an indirect question when the direct question begins with can. We also use the word could before change in the indirect question. Yes and no questions in direct form have the word if in the indirect question. For example, direct, does Tom like Italian food? Indirect. Do you know if Tom likes Italian food? Direct. Are your parents joining us for dinner? Indirect. Could you tell me if your parents are joining us for dinner? Direct. Do they speak English? Indirect. I was wondering if they speak English. Direct. Has Barbara ever studied abroad? Indirect. Do you have any idea if Barbara has ever studied abroad? Direct. Do you plan on traveling this summer? Indirect. I'd like to know if you plan on traveling this summer. Okay, let's review the rules for indirect questions. Indirect questions have no auxiliary verbs, like do, does, or did. In indirect questions, forms of the verbs be and have come after the subject. For questions beginning with the word can, we change it to would it be possible or is there any chance in the indirect question. And yes or no questions become if in the indirect question. For more practical speaking and writing tips for business and professional English, take the Business English course. 
It has 30 lessons with video, audio, text, and practice exercises, teaching you essential vocabulary and practical phrases for using English in your job. Thanks for watching English Tips from Espresso English. If you liked this video, please share it. Subject and Object Questions from EspressoEnglish.net First, let's review the concept of a subject and an object. The subject is the person or thing that performs the action. For example, we want some fruit juice. The subject is we. Karen likes Fred. The subject is Karen. Smoking causes cancer. The subject is smoking. Daniel made a sandwich. The subject is Daniel. The earthquake damaged my house. The subject is the earthquake. Jennifer lied to Sam. The subject is Jennifer. And the object is the person or thing that is acted upon or receives the action. For example, we want some fruit juice. The object is fruit juice. Karen likes Fred. The object is Fred. Smoking causes cancer. The object is cancer. Daniel made a sandwich. The object is a sandwich. The earthquake damaged my house. The object is my house. Jennifer lied to Sam. The object is Sam. Most questions in English are object questions. We want to know about the receiver of the action. Object questions follow the quasim formula question word, auxiliary verb, subject, and main verb. When asking an object question in the simple present, we use the auxiliary verbs do and does. For example, what do you want to drink? We want some fruit juice. We are asking about the object, fruit juice. Who does Karen like? Karen likes Fred. We are asking about the object of Karen's affection, Fred. This is an object question, so we use the auxiliary verb does. What does smoking cause? Smoking causes cancer. Again, this is an object question. In the simple past, we use the auxiliary verb did with object questions. For example, what did Daniel make? Daniel made a sandwich. We are asking about the object that Daniel made. What did the earthquake damage? The earthquake damaged my house. Who did Jennifer lie to? Jennifer lied to Sam. These are all examples of object questions. We don't know the object, the receiver of the verb, so we ask about it. But sometimes we want to ask about the subject. We don't know the person or thing that performed the action, and we want to find out. This type of question is called a subject question, and subject questions do not use the auxiliary verbs do, does, and did. To form a subject question, use the question word who or what, plus the verb in the simple present or simple past, plus the object. Let's look at some examples. Who wants some fruit juice? We want some fruit juice. This question is asking about the subject. Who is taking the action of wanting the fruit juice? So we say, who wants? Don't say, who does want? That's incorrect. Here's another example. Who likes Fred? Karen likes Fred. We're asking about the subject, so we use the question word, who, plus the verb in the simple present, likes, and then the object, Fred. Who likes Fred? Karen likes Fred. Here's another example. What causes cancer? Smoking causes cancer. Again, we are asking about the subject, so we don't use an auxiliary verb. Here are some examples of subject questions in the simple past. Who made a sandwich? Daniel made a sandwich. What damaged your house? The earthquake damaged my house. 
Who lied to Sam? Jennifer lied to Sam. Because all of these questions are asking about the subject, we do not use the auxiliary verb did. In other verb tenses, like present continuous, present perfect, etc., the auxiliary verbs are forms of the verbs be and have. In these verb tenses, we still use the verbs be and have in both subject and object questions. Let's consider the sentence, Paul is washing the car. That's in the present continuous. The subject question would be, Who is washing the car? And the object question is, What is Paul washing? Here's an example in the past continuous. The manager was talking about the problem. To make a subject question, we would ask, Who was talking about the problem? And to make an object question, we would ask, What was the manager talking about? Let's consider the present perfect. My parents have spent a thousand dollars on a computer. The subject of that sentence is, My parents, and the object is, One thousand dollars. To form a subject question, we would ask, Who has spent a thousand dollars on a computer? And to make an object question, we would ask, How much have your parents spent on a computer? It's the same pattern for the present perfect continuous. I have been working on this project. The subject is I, and the object is this project. The subject question would be, who has been working on this project? And the object question would be, what have you been working on? In the future, the auxiliary verb is will, and we use it in both subject and object questions. For example, this textbook will help the students. The subject is this textbook, and the object is the students. So, to form the subject question, ask, what will help the students? And to form the object question, ask, who will this book help? And finally, we can also form the future with going to. For example, we are going to order dessert. The subject is we. To form the subject question, ask, who is going to order dessert? The object of the sentence is dessert. So to form the object question, ask, what are you going to order? When you are going to ask a question in the simple present or simple past using who or what, ask yourself, am I asking about the doer of the action or the receiver of the action? If you're asking about the doer, the subject, then don't use do, does, or did. Ask who wants fruit juice. Don't ask who does want fruit juice. Ask what damaged your house? Don't ask, what did damage your house? If you're asking about the receiver of the action, then you should use do, does, or did in the question. You can click on the link in the video to take a quiz and test yourself on this topic. I hope you found this lesson helpful. One problem is that a lot of English students learn about grammar rules, but they never put them into practice. This leads to having a theoretical knowledge of English, but finding it impossible to use correct English grammar in a practical way. That's why my advanced English grammar course includes both quizzes and writing tasks. Not only can you test yourself, but you can also get feedback on how you are using the grammar in practice. Pronunciation Changes in English Questions Has this ever happened to you? Someone asks you a question in English and you don't understand it at all? It can be frustrating and embarrassing when you don't understand a question, but this video will help. One reason for the difficulty is the pronunciation changes that often occur at the beginning of questions in English. Let me show you some examples. Do you often sounds like do ya, so 
When we ask, do you like spaghetti, it sounds like this. Do you like spaghetti? Are you sounds like are ya. Are you at work right now? Are you at work right now? Can you sounds like Kenya. Can you give me a ride? Can you give me a ride? In this question, the words give me also sound like gimme. These pronunciation changes also happen when the question starts with a question word. For example, what do you think? What do you think? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? When can you call me? When can you call me? There is a different pronunciation change after the words did, would, and could. Did you sounds like did ya? Did you finish the book? Did you finish the book? Would you sounds like would ya? Would you like anything to drink? Would you like anything to drink? Could you sounds like could ya? Could you close the window? Could you close the window? Knowing about these pronunciation changes can help you understand questions in English better because you won't be surprised by the difference in the sounds of the words. Thanks for watching English Tips from EspressoEnglish.net. If you liked this video, please share it. Learn English phrases to ask for information from EspressoEnglish.net. Are you lost? Do you want to know which bus to take or what time the bank opens? Here are five English phrases you can use to ask somebody for the information you need. Number one. Can you tell me? Or, could you tell me? This is the most common way to ask for information. You could use can or could. Can is probably a little more informal. For example, could you tell me how to get to the train station? Number two. Can anyone tell me? Or, could anyone tell me? Use these phrases when you are addressing a group of people, not an individual. For example, can anyone tell me what time the bank opens? Number three, do you know? Use this phrase if you're not sure whether or not the person you're speaking to knows the answer. For example, do you know how long the movie is? Number four, do you have any idea? And, do you happen to know? These phrases, like the previous one, are used if it's possible the other person doesn't know the answer. For example, do you have any idea why today's class was canceled? Number five. I wonder if you could tell me. This phrase is the most indirect. For example, I wonder if you could tell me who I need to contact for information about job openings. Do you want to learn the phrases that native English speakers use in everyday life and improve your spoken English? Check out the Everyday English Speaking course, which will teach you what you need to know. Hello students, this is Shana, your teacher at EspressoEnglish.net, and I'm excited to present the first Ask the Teacher lesson, which means I'll be on video answering your questions. So today's question is, what's the difference between these two questions? Does she have a car? And doesn't she have a car? This is an excellent question because there is, in fact, a difference between these two forms of the question. The question with does, does she have a car, is neutral. I don't know if the answer is yes or no, and I don't expect the answer to be yes or no. It's simply a regular neutral question. The version with doesn't, doesn't she have a car? 
I would ask it like this if I assumed or expected the answer to be yes, and I'm only asking to check or confirm that I'm correct and make sure I'm not mistaken. For example, if I saw this person driving a car two weeks ago, then I could ask, doesn't she have a car? Because I assume the answer is yes. But maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe the answer is, well, she used to have a car, but she actually sold her car yesterday. We can form questions with any negative auxiliary verb when we assume or expect the answer to be yes, but we still want to ask to check if we're mistaken, or when we're surprised that the situation appears different from the way we assumed it to be. For example, the question, can you speak Spanish, is a neutral question. The answer could be yes or no. I have no expectations about the answer. I really want to know if you can speak Spanish. Now let's imagine I have an American friend who lived in Spain for 10 years, and one day I ask him for the translation of a Spanish sentence, and he says he doesn't know how to translate it. I would say, what? Can't you speak Spanish? Because I assumed that since he lived in Spain for 10 years, he would have learned the language, but maybe he didn't pay attention or didn't make an effort. So I ask, can't you speak Spanish? But maybe I'm mistaken, and the answer is no. Here's an example with the verb have. Let's say my brother is going on vacation. I could ask him, have you bought the tickets, the plane tickets? That's a neutral question. He might say, yes, I have, or no, I haven't bought them yet. Now let's imagine it's the day before the trip and my brother is completely stressed out because he doesn't have the plane tickets. I would ask him, haven't you bought the tickets? Because I'm just surprised, I'm shocked that he didn't buy the tickets earlier than the day before. I assumed that the answer was yes. Yes, he had bought the tickets, but I'm surprised to find out that the situation is different from what I expected. So again, you can start a question with a negative auxiliary verb like doesn't, isn't, aren't, haven't, can't, shouldn't, and many others when you assume that the answer to the question is yes or you expect the answer to be yes, but you're asking to confirm or to check if you're possibly mistaken. This actually reminds me of another way to ask a question when you're assuming that the answer is yes, and that is to use a question tag. Here's an example of a question tag. She has a car, doesn't she? This is actually a statement, she has a car, with a question attached, doesn't she? Again, I'm expecting or assuming that the answer is yes, but I'm asking just to confirm. There are actually two ways to use question tags, and it depends on your tone of voice. If I use a question tag with my intonation going up at the end, that means I'm really asking a question to confirm. She has a car, doesn't she? Now, if I say a statement with a question tag, but my intonation goes down at the end, that means I'm not really asking a question. I'm just making a statement that I expect the other person to agree with. Here's an example of that. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Notice my intonation. It doesn't go up at the end. It goes down. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? This means I'm not really asking you if it's a beautiful day or not. I'm just making a statement that I expect you to agree with. Here's another example of a question tag like that. Imagine I went to a restaurant with some friends, but the food at the restaurant was terrible. The next day, I could make a comment to my friend. The food wasn't very good, was it? I'm not really asking the question, I'm just making a statement that I expect my friend to agree with, because it's obviously true, the food was terrible. Remember, to use a question tag, the verb in the question tag is the opposite of the main verb in the statement. For example, she has a car, doesn't she? The main verb, has, is in the positive form, and the verb in the question tag, doesn't, is in the negative form. You can also reverse it. The food wasn't very good, was it? The verb in the main statement, wasn't, is in the negative form. And the verb in the question tag, was, is in the positive form. So that's just a quick introduction to question tags. Let's review the three forms of questions that we covered in today's lesson. There's the normal question, does she have a car? 
Ask this question when you really want to know the answer. You're neutral. You don't know if the answer will be yes or no. Then there's the form with the negative auxiliary verb. Doesn't she have a car? Ask this question when you expect or assume the answer to be yes, but you're just asking to check or confirm. You can also do this by using a question tag. She has a car, doesn't she? Again, we expect the answer to be yes, but we just want to confirm it and make sure we're not mistaken. And finally, you can make a statement with a question tag that's not really a question. It's merely an obvious statement designed so that the other person will agree with you. For example, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? And when we use the question tag in this way, our intonation goes down at the end instead of going up like a normal question. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson and please keep sending me questions so that I can answer them in future Ask the Teacher lessons. See you next time.